How's it going? I'm Bob Flounders. He's Dave Jones. It's the Blue White Breakdown podcast. And man, I think Dave, without tipping our hands, I feel pretty good about this show because there's a lot to dig into. We got some Penn State news involving Micah Parsons, Jesse Lucetta, Penn State great Dan Connor. We're going to get into what's going on with Jim Harbaugh, former former UM offensive coordinator Josh Gaddis. We might even talk a little bit about Brian Harson, who Dave kind of – you saw this coming. You kind of kind of knew this was probably going to come. Not a fit. Not a fit. Last, last, speaking before, of, the, speaking before, before last season. Speaking and then, of digging in, where did and you, then, it looks like you dug into your closet. What the hell is that? This that, is my cotton bowl. No, the, the, no the, the ski cap. Oh, it's a fireball hat. Who? Fireball. Have you never had fireball? The drink? Yeah, Canadian whiskey. Oh, I'd rather not have that stuff. Yeah, yeah, That's, I know. Yeah, can back off, Dave. Can make hey, Dave, it back it. off. Can and then we're going to get to the too. Super Bowl. Dave's Bengals, he's going to make a pick. Uh, we're going to analyze the game so a little what, bit. But we got so what, much to get to, Dave. Why don't, but, you, uh, why don't you tell me any of this stuff ahead of time? You know, Because I don't like uh, – because that way there's too late for you to wiggle out of it. Professional podcasts go through this stuff ahead of time. <laughs> uh, and also, Kaiser, Dave's German Shepherd – uh, maybe the most intimidating bark I've ever heard. Uh, it'll not an ever, but that that shook me. Uh, I would not want to get your dog. I know he's did, a did you ever? Did you ever? I would not want to get your dog mad. Did you ever make Freddie? Did you ever boof to Freddie to see what he did? You know the alarm bark. I tried all. I tried all my tricks with Freddie, but his bark was not as intimidating as your. We dog. can do that. Watch, watch. Here he comes. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. enough. Right. at least he does he didn't go for your throat so we're, we're good we're good but uh Wait a while. It's, good to, it's good it's good to see kaiser yeah. dave let's just get to the penn state stuff real quick uh michael parsons out in las vegas for a week uh i'm sure he had a great time but they did have an unofficial NFL's fastest man competition. It was four people. Tyreek Hill, who Ty- really- Tyreek Hill, first of all, didn't, didn't look like really- he was running full yeah, speed. Correct. He didn't even get into he didn't even get into a stance. Yeah. Uh, he didn't look super motivated. Uh, Nick Chubb was in it. So was uh, 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 Trayvon Diggs, the Dallas corner, and Micah's teammate. And it was a really good race. Michael won it uh, at two hundred and forty five pounds. Um, the funny thing is, everyone's Dave. Everyone's so incredulous about Micah winning this, and it is an unbelievable athletic feat. But if, I don't know if you remember, but uh, Jason Owe, now known as Odafe Owe, those, these two would run every summer at Penn State, and Owe, who's at least twenty five pounds heavier than Micah, would always beat him. So next year, I want to see Owe out of this thing, and I want him to. I, I want him to run forty yards against Micah, and I think he can beat him. Did you actually that. watch the Pro Bowl, though? I watched the first drive, and I was so disgusted I turned it off. Yeah. It's got to go, doesn't it? It's got to go. It's got to go. Like, if that's, if that's the best you can do, don't bother. It's insulting. How about they just let – I saw this on social media, and it didn't go viral, but it was on social media. The, 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 have, uh, what if the, the bottom two teams every year play off? That'll be the it'll be the old playoff bowl, except to avoid uh, relegation. And then they bring up like uh, some minor league team to replace them every year. That that I had no idea what was what was coming. And when I watched that, I was that was disgusting. I was. What about what about flag? What if they play flag yeah. football? Well, I just be you, know, Dave, you, you know, like in the seventies when the AF, AFC and the NFC squared off, it was a war in this game. Like they they played like it was literally yeah it was like Pete Rose but yeah but, it, it was like that not only that do you remember the coaches all star game where they would pummel the rookies coming in <laughs> and enjoy it and they weren't even in shape yet there were sacks in that game where kids uh, careers could have been ruined before they even got going and they would they were that game back in the I think they didn't they cancel it after a big there was a monsoon. In yeah. Soldier Field in, in like 1975, I think yeah. the Steelers were playing the college all stars, yeah. and that was it. There was like, yeah. they just they just decided that would that would be. I it. I can't repeat this story on the Blue White Breakdown podcast, and neither can Dave Jones. My all time favorite Jack Ham story. He came down during the Penn State Michigan State weather game that Dave enjoyed so much 
in 2017. Then we had like a three, three hour and 41 minute delay. And he was talking to us in the press press box. And he re, he told us a story about when he played for the college team against, I forget who it was, but he told us a story about one of his teammates, Isaiah Robertson, that I cannot go into in good conscience. But today, <laughs> one of my favorite stories about Isaiah and some of his off the field antics. Uh, whenever I see Jack, I always think of the Isaiah Robertson story. But that was part of the defending Super Bowl champion uh, college football all-star classic in July every year. People wouldn't believe that that actually happened. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the very thought of all these agents and the teams allowing right. their, their, their top draft choices to be abused yeah. by the best team in football. Surprise cattle. Surprise cattle. Or July, you know. Yeah. Like, what was the last? It was the very first game of the year. It was like at the end of July. It was before the Hall yeah. of Fame game, right? Yeah, I think that the I think the Super Bowl champs got an extra week of practice and the college all-stars before they went to their NFL teams got together for like eight <laughs> or nine days. And then that they just existed in the mid-70s. Yeah. That existed. Joe Green was terrorizing these kids <laughs> in the mid-70s. Anyway, we got beside the point. Michael Parsons, yeah. can you imagine? Can you imagine that coming at you in freight training? No, that's what I was thinking. At full speed. In the open field. In the open field. What are you going to do? Oh, what happened. are you going to do? It happened to my your nephew. Quarter, your quarterback <laughs> lead. Yeah, or, yeah, or that. Yeah. <laughs> he comes off the corner, beats the right tackle cleanly, and the, right, the quarter, quarterback just looks just, just enough to see that thing coming at me. And it's, it's, it's not good. It's what not do good. you do? You just get fetal very quickly. You, you, yeah. Go down. Painkiller. Pain, pour it all. Painkillers. Ice. You know, whatever you got to do. And what about, Dan, what about Dan Connor now? Okay, the, so, uh, yeah. Strathaven's own Dan Connor. Dan he Connor. He was hanging around here a while at Westchester. Yeah. But I lost Penn track State of Penn State great. Dan Connor is one of three people that uh, Penn State just hired to be analyst for the 2022 season. He's obviously going to be a defensive analyst. Another guy that they hired, Dave, you know this guy. I have. I had to uh, – I had, you, it's the former St. Joe's coach that coached John Reed. It is, let me get this right, uh, Gabe Infante. I don't know if you ever had a chance to talk to him. Uh, he's, he, was, he, he was at Temple. He was in college for a little bit. He's one of the analysts as well. He was a great coach at St. Joe's Prep. But uh, those two guys are going to be analysts. And I no, think no, that's no, – tell, tell the people what you mean, what, what these uh, – they're not like analysts like Brock Heward. There. No. Yeah. So I think when you're an analyst, you, I mean, they'll probably work on one tape, side of the right? ball. Huh? You crunch tape? Yeah. I think, I think that is probably one of their main things to do. I, I think there's probably some prep work for upcoming games, but yeah, they are, they are, it's a, I don't want to say it's a catch all job, but it's whatever they need done that there's not enough time to do, they're probably going to get done. But I mean, that's how you get, that's how that's you, get, how you get, get your foot in the door. It's a but Dan Connor from what, uh, if anyone's seen the, 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 I guess it was a 30 for 30 on, or maybe it was a, a football life on the, uh, 91 Brown staff under Belichick. Yeah. That was a great one. Yeah. That coaching staff. Unbelievable. Yeah. They were all making like $12,000 a year. Yeah, and those guys were doing whatever they had to do to get their foot feet in the door. And, you know, one of them was, well, Nick Saban was actually one of the higher up ones. But a lot of them called themselves slappies, which means, can we say that on the podcast? I I think, I think I I will, I say, let's try it and they can always edit it out. It means slap dicks. Yeah. Yeah. Not a term of affection. Yeah. Kind of like, you know. (laughs) You know, if you get called a slappy, it's it's kind of either you're friendly with the person who called you it or it's an immediate fight. You do whatever needs to be done, yeah. whether it be. That was a the really airport. good. That was a yeah. really good. It was 30, a terrific, 30. terrific yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah. Mike was Lombardi good. was in there. All, yeah. That was a who's who of uh, future coaches. Uh, who was the uh, Kansas GMs. City? The Kansas, the Kansas City uh, future GM. I can't think Scott of it. Scott Pioli. Name. Right, Scott, Scott Pioli. Pioli in there. Um, I don't know if Ferentz was on that. There was like Jim well, the, Schwartz, the, I think, yeah, was in Kirk there. Kirk Ferentz was in it. Uh, the, uh, the future Thomas Jets. Dimitri, Thomas Dimitrioff was on the that staff. Future Jets head coach. Um, little guy. What was his name? I can't think of any of these guys. Names. You got, you can't keep doing this to me. I thought you I know who you mean, too. I know who huh? you mean, too. Yeah, I know who you mean too, but yeah. I can't think of it off the top. He's on ESPN now. That was a hell of a staff. It was, it was, it was, yeah. and they they actually got really good just before uh, he. I think he left. I think he eventually well, left. 
when Parcells in, got the Patriots job. In college athletics these days, there's yeah. enough money, despite what you might hear of <laughs> uh, the, the, the deficits because of COVID and oh my, they're still rolling in money. Yeah. And there are jobs, money making jobs, not big money, but there right. are jobs for guys who are just willing to work 80 hours and do whatever is necessary. And these are those kinds of jobs. They, they really have decided they want to coach and they're going to do whatever they have to do. And yeah. if they do a good job at that, there's money to be made, boy, these days, even as a position coach. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about two, three hundred thousand dollars now as a position coach at yeah. major college football. Yeah. Dan Connor, number 40, uh, hell of a player, still Penn State's all time leading tackler. Uh, went on to play in the NFL with the Panthers, the Cowboys for a year, and I think the Giants for a year. Uh, I know you did. I think you did a story on him a couple of years back about you. I don't know. Was he in college? He, or he, he was at Westchester. Yeah. Or, wait, he yeah. was at West. He was at Westchester as an assistant. Geez, that's been more than a few years ago. I think it was about eight now. All right. So Dan Connor, real quick, Jesse Lucetta at the Senior Bowl really had an impressive week of practice. Uh, they had. I saw him. They were looking at him. As a, a defensive end, you know, in a four-point stance or a three-point stance, rushing off the edge, and he gave some tackles some real trouble. He's a hybrid defender, Dave, that I think is going to go earlier than even I thought. I mean, this guy could be – because because he can play multiple positions, he could be a top-100 player. He really, really – that last year at Penn State was so good, and you could tell he is focused on getting better. And, man, I think he's going to be a really, really – his best football is going to be ahead of him. It's great. Um, did you expect him or what, where do you expect yeah. him to get drafted? Uh, I mean, I thought, you know, mid rounds, I thought, you know, once I was skeptical when they said we we're going to move him to defensive end. And I was like, well, but uh, every time they make those moves um, they almost always work. Uh, I just, uh, you know, it took him, it took him a little while to get going at Penn state. And to be fair, he, there were some pretty talented linebackers in his way, like, you know, it, you, you know, Micah and, 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 you know, Ellis Brooks, Brandon Smith and Curtis Jacobs. And it's just not that easy uh, to get on the field. But boy, uh, as a defensive and he and he's got a nice little nasty streak to him. He's a finisher. And when he hits you, he hurts you. So to he's, complete he's, the talk about number 40s here. Yeah, there you um, go. Jason Cabinda has has kind of caught on and he's a way. fullback. I think he might have made the Pro Bowl as an alternate. Or he's really, really good. Special teams player, and yeah, yeah. Um, good for that's, him. That's so. Uh, that's three number forties, isn't that it? That is three number forties. Yeah. I don't even know if I could name a fourth off the uh, top of my old noggin. So, well, what I is, can. Can you? Was, yeah, it was oh. the, the the guy that started in, in front of Lavar was Aaron Gatton. <laughs> Oh, that's not fair. And, and Gatton's a pretty good football player. So you're saying on the Mount Rushmore of Penn State 40s, if there's four of them, Gatton's <laughs> on the Mount Rushmore? Is that what you're telling me? Well, it depends on whether you're watching Penn State and you got a 40 <laughs> in your hand. That's, that's probably right. what's – that's that's the Mount Rushmore. Yeah. All right. that that's So that's, the, that's the, the, the crux of the Penn State news on the Blue White Breakdown podcast. But the fun's only just beginning. This, this is where you wanted to go. This yeah. is where you wanted to go. Because we talked about it last week. What co- only one coach in the history of college football would interview for an NFL, NFL job and think he's got it on signing day. And that man was Jim Harbaugh. And it, it sure, everything I've read, uh, every inside story, he thought he had the job. And it, nothing could be further from the truth. He didn't get it. He actually called Michigan <laughs> on the way back from Minneapolis and said, I will be coming back in 2022. And then uh, Domino's a couple days later, there was a report, Josh Gaddis unhappy texted some players about being underappreciated at Michigan uh, after he took the Miami offensive coordinator job. I think he got a real, real nice salary bump, but what do you make of this whole situation with Harbaugh? They're two, they're two different things, but just two really, really crazy stories for February. Do you under, do you understand what very probably happened here? I have a, I have my I own mean, thoughts. Ward, yeah. Ward, well, this is what I think. Ward, yeah. Ward Manuel, the AD, uh, was told by Harbaugh, I got it. So yeah. uh, you That's can what I think. Make, yeah. make, make, make your plans, make your plans. And um, 
Harbaugh's got, and, and so Josh Gaddis got his, got his hopes up. I think he was told probably he would be on the short list of interviewees. Uh, he did, uh, you know, his uh, Broyles Award winner, not even a nominee, a winner this last year. I've right. been at uh, Michigan for three years. Uh, that has the heritage of having worked under Nick Saban and uh, uh, here before that as probably the best wide receivers coach they ever had, wouldn't you say? Josh? Uh, he was very, very good. Very good. Yes. Very good at his job. Yeah. I don't know about yeah. the best. But um, yeah. So he, he got his, he got his hopes up and he probably really thought he had a shot and then they have to roll everything back because of what? Well, to me, it's all Jim Harbaugh's <laughs> communication issues. He, he has trouble deciphering what other people are saying and God knows who the hell knows what he's, what he's saying or what he's thinking. He like, doesn't even know what Woody Hayes said. How's he <laughs> going to know about ask? Come to, come to think of it, ask me a question. Uh, ask me any simple question as if I'm Jim Harbaugh. This is his problem. Jim, how do you improve upon last year's defensive effort when you lose two All-American rush ends? Yeah. <laughs> Not sure I understand the question. <laughs> Could you restate that, please? <laughs> yeah. That's, now, that's now, now, now restate it. <laughs> okay no okay. i won't make it that yeah, yeah. Uh, but, i mean but, that's right and, and every year like at, at big Ten media days it's the questions that are the quirkiest questions that are not as specific as that that get him all excited where you never know like 12 you minutes. never know i mean yeah. can you imagine if he went to minneapolis thinking he had it <laughs> locked up for whatever reason and they ask him for detailed yeah. plan of, of action on what he's going to do to take the Vikings <laughs> to the Super Bowl. And he said something, he says something like, a, uh, we're, we're going to win. We're going to win. You got to be, got to, got to be ready to be win. Got to be ready to be a winner. You got to, got to be prepared. You're going to, you're going to be ready. And then, and then that would be it. And, and he'd sit there, you know, who knows, who knows what he did. The guy just got a communication breakdown of some sort. Yeah. And I've never seen anybody like him. I, yeah, I agree. A major college coach. I mean, <laughs> who's who's ri ri risen to that level. And actually, his record's been pretty good. Yeah, he's, he got got to the 49ers to the Super Bowl. But sooner or later, this communication problem he has, it seems to me, always gets in the way. And that's why assistants always yeah. peel off before they do on other staffs. So that's kind of an epidemic everywhere now. But never seen anyone like it so now you know now they've got they've lost both coordinators you yeah. know there there would have been a domino effect here too because i think matt rule was definitely on the short list now do you think he leaves in charlotte to go back to college yet seeing he's had two seasons in the nfl and he's i would say i would say well the owner the owner tepper uh, has about has had about enough of Matt Rule. Right, uh, this year is going to have to be a winning record, or he's going to be out. And that said, do you think Rule would have left and cut his losses and gets a new uh, contract? He probably would have. He probably yeah, I think he would have because he could see the writing on the wall. Now rewind <laughs> if if USC retains interest in James Franklin, he doesn't lose all those games. He's off to LA, and. Who gets Matt Rule? Maybe it's those Penn State and Nittany I, Lions. Uh, I know for a fact they were they were they were going to go after. Him. So <laughs> now nobody gets Matt Rule, and we 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 were really expecting that Michigan might get him. And from what I've heard, he wants to. He's certainly entertaining the idea of going back to college. He was a really yeah, good yeah. college coach, man. You can't name a guy who did it at two more disparate wastelands than Temple. And then Baylor, which don't forget was what were they one and eleven when he got there? Yeah, right? and uh, through going through sanctions and that whole mess. Sure, uh, sure, they they were in trouble, and he he rebuilt both completely. Uh, forget about the Panthers. That's what kind of college coach he is. I just want to say this, Dave. I just congrats to Josh Gaddis for being the top assistant, the Broyles Award winner, and he certainly. Uh, especially this past year, that was a that was a real real uh, tough offense to deal with. But 
he's at the point in his life, Dave, where he's got to handle his 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 stuff better. Like you cannot. No, you it was to, it was unprofessional. You have it? you have to know that that's going to get out, and that's a bad look. It he, just, he, I think he intended for it to get out. You don't send that to your players unless you know it's going to be leaked. I mean, I know, but I think that. he already. Ha- I mean, he's already got the Miami job. Why burn that bridge? Exactly. No, I'm with you. I mean, why would you do that? You yeah, don't. Do I just it. don't understand that. I don't. I just remember. You know what? Uh, you know, James picked Ricky Ronnie over him, and I'm sure he was not happy in 2000 and whatever that it was. The 2017 season, Ricky Ronnie became the interim head coach for, or the play OC for the for the bowl game win over Washington. I think he went to, to uh, uh, Alabama, which was obviously a step up. But I just think I don't think Josh deals with rejection very well. I think it's like I'm out. Okay, I gotta go. Well, I'm with you. I mean, it it doesn't. It doesn't help. It doesn't help. It, it doesn't, doesn't help, help you to be that out there with something like yeah. that. You you want to yeah. you want to keep your cards close to your best or close to your chest and and just do your job. Yeah. And I think a lot of GMs and owners don't like that because they don't want to have to deal with some outburst yeah. from a coach. It's one thing for a player to do it. It's another. And who is he kidding? Yeah. I mean. He's making a – it's not like he was disrespected at Michigan. Yeah. He, he, he was, I think, rather fortunate to get an OC job of that level when he did. Right. Um, to his credit, he fought off Harbaugh, who God knows. And, and that was going to be a spread offense, you remember. That was supposed to be a spread offense in 2019. And I think, well, we don't quite have the material. And then 2020 is COVID. And then this year – they, they've almost totally regressed back to smash mouth because yeah. that was the personnel. So I give Gattis credit yeah. for that. And he's dealing with Harbaugh, but, but still he's making a million a year. What is Ward Manuel supposed to do? Say, Jim, I'm sorry. We got a guy right here. He's we got a guy. Michigan man. Yeah. We got, wait, 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 what, you know, it, it, yeah. I don't, I don't get it. Uh, the, all, the, all these guys are basically, they're all motivated by two things, ego and money. Ego just like the rest of us would be were we in that situation. If you or I are, are have a chance, we're making a half a million with a chance to make a million, with a chance to make 5 million a year, all of a sudden that twists your head around. And some of these guys, they let their heads be twisted around. There are a lot of them. I mean, almost all of them. Anyway, go ahead. We'll see how it shakes out for a young Josh Gaddis in Miami. Dave, it's time to talk about my favorite Sunday of the year. Super Bowl Sunday. You have a dog in the fight, my man, with those Cincinnati Bengals. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Should we, be we, I, we, a fascinating Anna, matchup. I love it. I can't Anna wait. And I, Ann and I got to a hotel. We took a vacation. You remember during the first Gulf War and nobody was going on vacation? It was January of 91. I was and at that Super Bowl. I covered the that. Giants, Giants and Bills. The Whitney yeah. Houston anthem game. Correct. Yep. Yeah. You were there? I was there. You you covered that for us? No, the Easton Express sent me. I cover. I actually covered the Giants, uh, some of their road games, a lot oh, of their home oh, games oh, oh. for a couple of years. And I didn't, you know, I wasn't obviously. I was just a little pup at that time. But they sent me to the Super Bowl. I I almost fell out of my chair, and then they approved the credential. And so it was just that game to me is one of the great. I mean, it wasn't the highest scoring game, but the matchup. Uh, how the Giants won that game? One of the great Super Bowls of all time. Was was was, was did you, when you heard Whitney Houston? Did you go wow? Like everyone? Uh, oh my God! It was, uh, everyone, I think everyone <laughs> was just the her her voice, the power of her, and the emotion in her voice. I think everyone, the hair on everyone's, you know, the back of your, uh, it was just, it was crazy. She, it was, it just blew me away. I could not believe what I was hearing. It was. Did you know she lip synced that and recorded it before the game? Yeah, that's a. Uh, that was not, you know, but it's still great. It was still great. Well, it's her voice and she recorded it there. She just yeah. wanted to get it absolutely right. So she lip synced it, but it's not like it wasn't her singing. It was. Yeah. Um, anyway, that, that, the two days before, this has been a running joke with me with, and, and Anna and my friends. We get to our hotel in Fort Lauderdale. We, we're going to go on a little vacation then. And you remember old hotel phones, they could leave messages Oh yeah, the, the lights flashing, and oh, I yeah. pick it up, and it's some guy who was a Giants fan. It was the day after the game, <laughs> the day after the game, and and this guy is a, just clearly a Giants fan, 
and he wants to celebrate with his buddy who's left the room. You know, he's checked out. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I pick it up. And he goes, hey, man, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, <laughs> Super Bowl champs. We're Super Bowl champs, man. We're Super Bowl champs. <laughs> so anyway, we, we always do go Super Bowl. Um, what are your plans? I, are you going to watch it at home? What are you going to do? I'm, I'm, I'm Nick's coming home from Pittsburgh and Very nice. we're going to have the two of us for certain might have guests, might not. We always, we usually have a couple of friends over, but this is going to be, this is going to be a test of the rules of fandom for me because I pretty much have divorced the Bengals yeah. back somewhere uh, in the aughts, you know, where they had the, all those knuckleheads, you know, Vontez Burfecht and uh, <laughs> Pac-Man Jones. And, you know, you can't root for that team. You can't. You can't. And, and, and Marvin Lewis just seemed to tolerate all of them. You know, that I didn't understand it. He wasn't a bad coach, but he just tolerates, tolerated yeah. idiots. And I, I, I had to divorce myself from him. So the question to you is, if you've already divorced of uh, 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 being a fan of a, a franchise, can you go back? Can I go back for that? I think you can. I do think you can. Um, and I'll, I'll say this about uh, as someone who always, I, I really, some of those Marvin Lewis teams were very, very talented. And the year the Steelers went to the Super Bowl as a wild card team and beat Seattle in the Super Bowl, their Super Bowl run started when they won their first playoff game at Cincinnati. That crazy Kimo, game, yeah. Kimo Von Offlin fell on Carson Palmer's leg and shredded it to pieces. I, Dave, I maintain that if Carson Palmer was healthy, I think the Bengals might have won the Super Bowl that year. Yeah, I mean, you could argue that that it was, is the, it was okay, but not against that defense. It, uh, it, Carson Palmer was much better. It it it's probably the franchise, the most star-crossed franchise as far as quarterbacks, because you've got Carson Palmer, who was never the same after that. Correct. And Damn. what a stud. What a stud. And you've got Greg Cook, who Shoulder. was way back in 1969, who Bill Walsh and Paul Brown, who are only like the two greatest innovators in the history of the game, said would have been the greatest quarterback of all time yeah. had he not had his shoulder uh, uh, crunched up by Jim Lynch. And only the only his fourth pro and City game. Chiefs? Yes. Only his fourth pro game. They actually won the game to go, I think, three and one. They ended up four, nine, and one because he yeah. was hurt the rest of the year, tried to come back, primitive surgery. So there's two guys, two really good franchise quarterbacks, uh, arguably – don't forget very, about very, Kenny Anderson and his mustache. Yeah, but but then you've got Boomer Boomer Sison, yeah. who was MVP of the league in '88, and they are they have a good shot at beating the 49ers after the '88 season in the Super Bowl. But then Stanley Wilson, who would really come on yeah. as the feature back, has a cocaine relapse the night before. You know, I was I was talking to some people in Cincinnati, and they said Al Davis would have just played him. Right. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> like that. But the Browns sent him home and he he didn't he didn't play at all. And Icky Woods was really not getting it done at that point. He got all the pub, but he was a little bit worn out. And then Tim Crumry, the, their yeah, great yeah. nose fibula. Guard, the fibula, has, right? has a broken, broken leg uh, going wobbling sideways on the first series of the game. Number and, 69. Yeah. Both of those guys, both yeah. of those guys a non-factor and they lose by four points on the last series. It's a star cross franchise. It really is. Uh, so I think everyone who really has any kind of soft spot for an underdog is going to be rooting for the Bengals. I'm, I'm certainly am. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's, I think it's a compelling game. I think with Joe Burrow in the game, they certainly he's like you said, he's not, he doesn't shy away from anything. He's really good in clutch spots. He doesn't panic. He can make plays with his feet, either extending plays with his uh, and making throws down the field, or he can run for first downs. And he's he's going to have to extend some plays this this game because yeah they're going to you know they're going to line up Aaron Donald on whatever side Isaiah Prince is you know. Well, I think the way the Von Miller's playing, Von, Von Miller on the other one, you know. Yeah, Aaron Aaron Donald can play outside, but he's also, I mean. 
pressure up the middle sometimes can be more devastating than pe- pressure off the flanks. And I think if you're if you're the Rams, you want to give them both. So uh, they will move Donna when they have to, but it it is going to be a problem those two guys. But man, I just uh, I just think this Bengals team's got a lot of pluck. They're better defensively than I think a lot of people realize, and I think that um, the re- one to me watching the Bengals play. Um, and I never thought I would say this, but they Burrow was the better quarterback in all three of their playoff games. And that's not a big stretch when they beat the Raiders. Tannehill played terrible um, in the in the game where they won at Tennessee. But that that game that Mahomes had that second half for him to be that much better than Mahomes. That was the difference in the game. Now, I just don't know if he can do that again. If he can do it again, they're going to win. Well, maybe they don't have to score that many points. Maybe right. the Bengals' defense, like you say, I mean, they right. did a hell of a job in the second half against they the did. Chiefs. They it did. wasn't all just Mahomes falling apart. Uh, they put pressure, some pressure on him. They did, and I, they corralled him a couple times. And maybe it would only take what? What is what is the over under? I don't even know. 50? 50, 48 and a half. Forty eight yeah. and a half. So, yeah. so, so mine's at four good. now. It's it was four and a half. It's at four. The Rams. Home field advantage means absolutely nothing. So it's it's. I like the fact that the weather won't be a factor either. It's just going to be, uh, you know. It, I mean, for two pure passers, skilled passers. I mean, as much as you think it's going to be a defensive game, uh, when when the conditions are optimum, sometimes sometimes there can be a lot of points on the board. So you think it's an over an over forty eight. I would lean that way, and I think uh, I, I think the Rams are going to win. I think the Rams are going to cover, and I, I, just watching just watching him play this postseason, uh, Odell Beckham hasn't looked like this since 2015, and I'm telling you right now, he is killing secondaries. And the fact that you got to worry about him and Cooper Cup, um, it's a t- it's a tough deal, I think, for the for the Bengals. And I think my, I have a I have a very strong feeling that Odell Beckham is going to go off. Do you trust the Rams quarterback? Now, this has been uh, a renaissance yeah. year for him coming over from the Lions. This yep. is the big moment. He, he yep. showed up big at the end of their conference championship. Will he do it in a pressure moment here? It's now or never, Dave. It's yeah. now or never because yeah. I, I don't I don't know that he's getting back to the Super Bowl if they don't. If they don't. I, and I think that I think he's he's got to seize the moment. As as gifted as Burrow is. I think in terms of physical talent, even though I think I think uh, Stafford's now like 33, he's he is a, an unbelievable physical talent, just a just a fantastic. He's not as accurate though as Joe Burrow is, and that's where I would say Joe has a big edge. But man, with 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 uh, with McVay scheming up some plays and having some extra time. Uh, I, I just think that they that they're a more well-rounded offense than the one that Belichick hit, held to three points. Um, yeah, that wouldn't that wouldn't help. Years. That wouldn't hurt. That that wouldn't happen again. Yeah, but, but well, I, I think I think that Burrow's going to have to outplay Stafford. But I, I do. I, I just I I think I've been thinking all week. I think Beckham's going off. And so I'm going to I'm going to say uh, thirty to twenty four, something like that. Rams. So 24 points doesn't win the game, even though the line, the, the over. Oh, it, could very, it could very well. It could very well be. I just think when there's no weather in play and these two guys are legit blue chip throwers of the football, you could, you could, you could play great defense against these guys for 90% of the game and the game could still end up in the thirties because okay. they're that good. Okay. Well, I will, I will pick the Bengals. Uh, and, and count on the Cincinnati defense to do what you say. Is it still three and a half or three, or what is it? It opened at four and a half. It's four now. So you four. get four All points. Right. You want to bet. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Cincinnati 24 to 19. And, Love it. And hope, hope that uh, they can do the job on the, the Rams offense. Dave, what root, what root for me and Greg Pickle in our block pool, our Super Bowl block pool. We have a bunch of numbers. So – if you get a text from me in all caps, chances are I won the block pool and look out. <laughs> Just look out. In all caps and indecipherable that's, other, that other will, figures. That's the, yeah. yeah, that'll be the dead giveaway that it was a good Sunday for Bobby. Um, String, strings of little used characters <laughs> on the keyboard. Yeah. I hope right. Kaiser has a good Super Bowl too. Make sure he gets some good stuff to eat. Yeah, he just wants to get out and gallop, so we better get out there. I'll see you. Dave, enjoy week. your Super Sunday, buddy. Super Bowl, Super Bowl. <laughs>
Super Bowl champs. All right. Adios. Yeah.